Hello and welcome to our demo of CatLink for IFS. Today we will cover the integration of SOLIDWORKS with IFS and the benefits that CatLink offers. CatLink is a direct integration between your SOLIDWORKS and IFS. It is a tool which uses a real-time bidirectional link to pull and push information from your SOLIDWORKS model and IFS. It can automatically create parts you just modeled in your item master, highlight discrepancies between the data sets, and synchronize your SOLIDWORKS and IFS bill of material in an organized and controlled way. By utilizing CatLink, you will eliminate manual data entry, reduce shop floor confusions, and inventory errors. Now here, we have a model in SOLIDWORKS, which is a multi-level assembly. And let's say you, the engineer, has designed this. It is complete and ready to push into IFS. As CatLink is a direct add-in to SOLIDWORKS, we can launch it from this interface. We can go to Tools, CatLink, run CatLink. As CatLink loads, we can see it's extracting all of the parts and bill of material information as well as doing the live comparison. So it's grabbed the components and their properties, such as the part number, description, revision, and the quantity. And it has compared it with the matching bill of materials and item master in IFS. Now we can see that we get this bomb grid now, and this helps the engineers visualize changes they're about to make in IFS, or the differences that were found between the two systems before they commit to those changes. Additionally, we can see that CatLink has healthy multi-level assembly structure and the color shown are the results of the comparison. Now let's go over what each color mean. So the white lines are parts that already exist in your IFS part master database. So whether they were previously added, as long as the part number exists in the part master, CatLink will recognize it and use the existing. The green lines are items that do not exist in IFS. So as CanLink ran that comparison, it couldn't find the item number within the IFS part master, therefore meaning that this is a new part created by an engineer. Once we hit save, CanLink will automatically create these parts in the IFS part master database, as well as add it to the bill of material of both system. Now the yellow highlighting are field level discrepancies between SOLIDWORKS and IFS. So by right clicking on the description, we can see that CatLink shows us the SOLIDWORKS description as well as the IFS description. We can select which one we'd like. If neither of them are correct or not up, or not up to company standards, we can add in our own description. By changing this once into CatLink, uh, it'll update both the SOLIDWORKS and IFS. So by using its bidirectionality, it can write back to the SOLIDWORKS property, which allows us to synchronize the data. Now for the quantity field, this is a bit more unique as it is a read-only field. So we can see when I right click, it'll show us the SOLIDWORKS and the IFS quantity, if I try to click on the IFS quantity, it will not update. This is because the bill of material quantity is always cat driven. So as the quantity is tied to the engineer's design, uh, in order to change the quantity, they will need to add or remove this item in the model. And this ensures that the IFS bill of material quantity will always match what's actually designed in SOLIDWORKS. Now going down to the gray line, these are items that do not exist on the model anymore, but are currently in the IFS bill of material. So what Calink is telling us is that when we hit the save button, it will remove this item from the IFS bill of material, but it'll keep it in the part master database in case it's being used in another bill of material. So on this bomb grid, we've discussed what the colors mean. We've gone over the fields mapped to SOLIDWORKS and IFS as well as we have fields that are mapped to IFS only. For example, the unit of measure 
and are populated as a drop-down list directly from IFS. Now to my right, we have this panel with multiple tabs. Each tabs displayed here are all read-only tabs. So starting off with the bomb change, this is a list of all changes that will take place when saving CADLink. So we can see, clicking on the part number, it lets us know that it'll be created as a new part and inserted into the bill of material. As well as if we go to the gray line item, it's letting us know that it'll be deleted from the material. So this helps you keep track of what CADLINK will change in IFS and on the SOLIDWORKS side and allows you to, to review the changes before saving. Also, we can export this as an Excel and PDF format. Next, we have the CAD data properties. So this is also a read-only tab, and this allows you to view the properties of your SOLIDWORKS model. Um, this allows the engineers to easily view their SOLIDWORKS data without having to switch between CADLINK and SOLIDWORKS. So by me clicking on each part, we can see it's showing us the original SOLIDWORKS property of that item. Lastly, we have the message tab. This is where we'd have a list of messages that need to be addressed before CADLINK can save. The save button would be grayed out if we had a message, but as there's no messages, this means that the data is now ready to be saved into IFS. So as we can see, CADLINK is a powerful tool to equip your engineers. The time your engineers save by using CADLINK can be reinvested in real engineering work. Thank you for your attention.